I am challenging myself to play StarCraft 2 without a mouse or keyboard. StarCraft 2 is a real-time strategy game. In this game, you manage your economy, build up armies, and attempt to defeat the opponent, who is trying to do the same thing. The game involves a lot of speed. In the heat of a match, players can reach over 200 actions per minute, or roughly 3 keystrokes per second. These actions also require a lot of accuracy, because a single mispressed key can result in losing the match. So if the game is this fast, why am I trying to play it without a mouse or keyboard? About two years ago I started getting aches in my forearms and hands. This started getting worse and worse until typing became painful. I went to see a doctor to get it diagnosed and fixed, but obviously there was no magic pill that solved everything. His advice was to use the computer as little as possible during the recovery. The problem with that is that my job already requires me to use the computer a lot, so that left just the weekends for recovery. During this time, I started looking for tools to use my hands less. I found a video of a guy programming with speech recognition, which is something I wanted to mess around with as well. So I made myself a Python script and eventually got it all to work. After that, I started experimenting with sound recognition using machine learning. When that started to work, I began to wonder if I could play simple games with it. So I started mapping specific sounds to certain keys and fired up Heroes of the Storm to test it out. To my surprise, it worked fairly well, but I still needed to use the mouse to play it, so I tried to replace that part as well. For this, I found myself using an eye tracker and a separately sold program called Project Iris, which roughly translated my sight to a position on the screen. While it isn't as precise as your regular gaming mouse, it can be accurate to about 1 inch. I improved the Python script a lot during that time and eventually was able to defeat the Elite AI in Heroes of the Storm. So then I started asking myself, if I can play heroes like this, why not StarCraft? While the game is definitely more taxing than heroes, I wanted to know if it was actually possible. The challenge I set out for myself is the following. I will attempt to beat the Heart of the Swarm campaign of StarCraft without using a mouse or keyboard. For this I will use the Python script that I made and the eye track. I will start with as few commands as I can and gradually evolve the program to be able to make more complex actions possible. Along the way I will learn how to use the program to actually play the game and who knows maybe eventually I will be able to use this method to play against other players. The rules of the challenge are the following. Rule number one, I cannot use my mouse or keyboard inside the game. Doing so disqualifies the progress and will force me to reset to the nearest checkpoint. Rule number two, I cannot develop macros. That means for every keystroke I must utter a sound or move my eyes in a certain direction. I cannot use a sound to do multiple actions at the same time. Rule number three, I cannot downscale the difficulty setting. If I set the difficulty to uh, hard, I cannot move below that hard difficulty. With those rules all laid out, let's start off with the first mission. The first version will use the eye tracker for mouse movements and two sounds for left and right clicking. This will allow me to select units and buildings and move them. We have to find out how much of the Zerg mutagen is left in your system. I appreciate your cooperation, Kerrigan. Do you usually keep cooperative people in a containment cell? When we know it's safe, I'll unlock your door myself. Now, can you reach out with your mind? Do you sense it? A drone? Are you really asking me to take control of a Zerg mind? Do you know what could happen? All the test subjects are in a secure environment. Bullet? Yeah, I have it. Okay, the next step. See if you can order the drone to mutate into a hatchery. <laughs> On the drone's command card, left click on the basic mutation button. S 
On the drone's command card, left click on the basic mutation button. On the drone's command card, left click on the basic mutation button. On the drone's command card, left click on the basic mutation button. Now left click on the mutate into hatchery button. A hatchery is the central structure of a zerg base. It spreads creep so that other structures can be built. The hatchery also produces lava, which you use to morph into more drones or other zerg creatures. When you use lava, the hatchery will replenish them over time. Okay, Kerrigan. I'm releasing more drones into the test chamber. See if you can order them to gather those resources. need an overlord to morph anything else. Do it then. One overlord shouldn't hurt. Now left click on the morph to overlord button on the command card. The Zerg use overlords to generate more supply. Your current supply maximum is displayed in the upper right corner of the screen, along with how much supply you are currently using. If you do not have enough available supply, you will not be able to morph a unit. Excellent. I plan to stop here, but let's take this a little further. Try mutating a drone into a spawning pool. Left click, left basic click, mutation, basic mutation, mutation. To mutate a Zerg structure, left click, first left select the drone mutation, by left click. Now, left click, 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 I don't think my opponents will leave me alone for a good 7 minutes before my spawning pool starts. So we're going to revise the program. Unit selection and movement is doing ok, but we really need to improve the command card usage in the bottom right corner. So I opened up a screenshot in MS Paint and found out at which pixels the command card is situated. So I rewrote the program to left click when I'm looking in that area and clicked on my tongue. This will hopefully speed up the building process. Let's try it out. Left click basic mutation on the command card. The spawning pool allows the hatchery to turn lava into zerglings. You know this is going to end badly, right? We have a controlled environment. The spawning pool is finished. You should go down to the test chamber and inspect it. I can see just fine from up here, thanks. I think that's all we need today, Kerrigan. Great work. If you think that was great work, wait till you see this. I'll make some zerglings. Stop! I didn't ask you 
to create Zerglings. Funny thing about Zerg, Valerian. They never do what you expect. Shut down the experiment. Get sentry bots in there to sanitize those holding cells. Lock down on the sublevel and power up the Eradicator. Nothing gets out! Maybe if I destroy your pretty Eradicator, you'll learn you can't control the Zerg. Those sentry bots are destroying the Zerglings in their pens. I can change that. I sense more Zerglings in holding pens. Valerian, you were very careless. Perhaps I'll free them too. to do with it. And maybe now, you understand how dangerous the Zerg are. I'll send them back to their pens. I appreciate that. I'm opening your cell right now, if you'd like to join me. And perhaps next time you can make your point without destroying half the facility. I finally managed to complete the tutorial level. While the program is still a pain to work with, I think it's doing okay for a second version. Let's see how far we can get in the second mission. <laughs> 